lot to talk about. Boy, it was a fun night at the Civic Center last night. There's no doubt about that. Double header sweep. You might have to take down that Black Hill State frame jersey they have up in here just for just for this week. Hey, that might hey, be wait, wait, wait. Time out. We want immediate time out. Immediate time out. What do you we want to thank the coaches, both of them, and their staff and the players for a relaxing, wonderful doubleheader win. Relaxing, relaxing. It was pretty relaxing because it wasn't too close most of the time, and I think the coaches probably like that. Before we talk about the games, uh, indoor track was up at Black Hill State this past Saturday. Had a national qualifier up there, I think. I won't get into it too much, but I'll let head coach Jerry Schaefer tell you about indoor track. Welcome up. Thanks, Kate. Uh, I also want to congratulate the basketball coaches. Uh, really appreciate uh, the games last night. That was fun to watch. Both uh, Coach Ryan and, uh, and Coach Henry did a great job. And, uh, just congratulations. So, a little bit about our meet last week, the uh, Murley Hanson Open at Blackfield State. We have so many meets, they have to change the names every week. They can't just be Blackfield State Invitational. So, the Murley Hanson Open last week, uh, we actually were very, very pleased with the start we got. It really looks like our kids did their due diligence over a break and, uh, and trained for the most part and uh, came back in really good shape. We ended up because of uh, because of the Friday meet last last Friday, we had a short week of training. The kids got back on Monday for classes. So we had Monday through Thursday practice, and typically our Thursday is a little shorter practice getting ready for Friday's meet. And so it was a short week course, and, and the kids just really came through beautifully. Um, we did have uh, a, uh, we had three provisional qualifying marks in the meet on Friday. Uh, Josh Thomas got two of those. He set a school record of 684 in the 60 meters. And he came back to the 200 and uh, set a provisional qualifier there. So he's currently on the national list tied for 17th in the 60. And he's tied for 12th in the 200 meters. And uh, the other qualifying mark was Nathan Courtney in the high jump. Nathan's a football kid that uh, came out this year. Uh, played two years of football, decided to come out the track this spring. Hasn't high jumped in almost two years, and uh, he's not missing a beat because he peaked with his personal best in high, at high school at six foot eight to get a provisional qualifier. Uh, if I give you some perspective about uh, six foot eight and how high that is, uh, if we were to stack Coach Larson on Coach Henry's shoulders, that might be six foot eight. Uh, in, all, in all seriousness, um, the height that Nathan cleared would have been taller than all of our basketball players with the exception of uh, Joe Newkirk and uh, Tristan Van Eden. So um, he's got to be got to be able to clear Tristan and Joe without knocking them over in order to actually get into the national beach because right now he's also tied for 17th in that event. So the other national qualifier we have came in December, Isaiah McGuire in the 60 meters, and right now he's sitting 26th on the list, so uh, we're going to put him back in the 60 this week and see how he can do, see if he can improve his time from Christmas. So those were our qualifiers, we're really pleased with that. We also had six first place finishes, uh, Josh Thomas had two of those, um, Nathan Courtney's kind of the third one. And then Shannon Morse, one of our juniors in the high jump, uh, won the high jump and uh, had an indoor personal best uh, in was 5.1, I believe, was her height. And then uh, both of our, our men's and women's 4x400 relay teams won their events as well. So we're really pleased with that. Uh, on top of that, we had six people, uh, including those mentioned, that uh, that improved on their, either improved or got onto our minds top 10 list in their events. Uh, we had uh, 10 personal best performances overall in the meet. And then uh, just want to make a comment, we had, uh, uh, of the, the, uh, in general, the performances we had, uh, we felt like our, our freshman sprinters really gave us a lot of gutting performances. 
the way they ran. We had two freshman gals that, that did a superb job. One, uh, Kayla Paul was, was nursing a, a low back injury a little bit, struggled with the 60, and the and her back was bothering her, but she came back and, and gave us just a tremendous second leg in that 4x4, four four, and uh, just did a super job running through that, that back pain. And, uh, and now she's on the bend a little bit, still dealing with that, but uh, to see the pain on her face going into that race, but, but determined that she was going to run her leg and, and help carry her team was tremendous. And then her freshman teammate, Allie Hodgson, um, I did, hadn't realized Allie had never run a 400 in high school. And uh, we had her in the 400, scheduled to run the second leg, and we put her in the open leg because uh, because Kayla's back was bothering her and, and hurt the worst coming out of the box. So Allie got in, and after the race, uh, uh, I asked her how that 400 went, and, and was that her personal best? And she said, yeah, that's the first time I've ever run that. <laughs> and, uh, so well, they did a great job, and uh, so we were excited about that. We also had a couple of freshman guys that ran very, very well. Kevin Patak is, is the son of Dan Patak, who played quarterback a years ago. Kevin gave us just two great 400s in his efforts, and uh, one in the open, he was ran a low 53 and uh, was close to placing, and then he came back and ran even faster than Breland. So you know, we were pleased with that performance as well. Uh, our women's distance runners did a really nice job in the 3K. Uh, several of those veterans, and, and they ran pretty close to their personal best to, to open the season. So you know, we think they're going to progress nicely. They, uh, they're far ahead of where they were last year at this time. Uh, and then Erica Westwood is a sophomore in the 800. She gave us a really solid uh, 800 uh, this weekend as well. And then Jacob Huber, one of our guy milers, who's also a sophomore. Um, Jacob had a personal best in, in the mile, and uh, we're looking for some really great things and great improvement for him as well. Jack Batho, our sophomore thrower, is dealing with some, some little tweaky injuries, but uh, in the weight throw, he was coming off of that short week and he only practiced the weight throw twice, Monday and Thursday, with a little bit of a lighter workout. And he ended up improving his personal best from last year as well. By quite a, by quite a distance, he threw over 53 feet this week. And uh, so, you know, we're, we're hoping we get him healthy, get those little tweaky things that are, that are bothering him to keep under control. You know, we're looking for big things from him as well. He was a provisional qualifier last year in the shot put out rules. And uh, just missed nationals by about two and a half inches in the shot. So we want to see his progress come around as well. So um, next uh, next Saturday we do have uh, the Dave Little Invitational honoring the old longtime uh, track coach from Blackfield State, Dave Little. I, I saw him last night, a little dejected after the game. Um, and uh, just kind of commented, he said, well, at least it's not the Dave Little Memorial uh, Memorial week this week. So he's going to be, be happy to be there and, and uh, participate in that as well. So uh, any questions? 6.84 seconds. So um, blink a couple of times and, and you'll miss uh, Josh's 60 meter race. Any other questions? Yeah, it's, it's, you know, we've got a pretty good sized freshman class of track. And, uh, you know, they, they're, they're good, solid kids. They've got good marks coming in, uh, you know, out of high school, but they've got tremendous upside. And again, their, their attitudes as far as training and, and wanting to compete is, is something that sometimes that's a little rare in some of the kids we get. So we're excited about these kids. And this, this group, so. All right, thanks. Thank you, Coach. I'll tell you what, I've been talking about the Hard Rocker women's team over at the Civic Center Ice Arena. They've had pretty darn good luck over there. I mean, we seem to shoot really well. Black Hill State seems to shoot not so well. It's fairly new our defense, but I think that uh, it was a pretty darn good game last night. It started out a little slow, but Way to finish, strong finish. Welcome up, head coach Ryan Bush. Thanks.
State. Uh, thank you everybody for showing up. Uh, Coach, uh, I really like that. That was a good picture in my mind of Coach Henry and I stacked on top of each other's shoulders. But I, what I envisioned was uh, either LeBron James or Rob Gronkowski would combine our two athleticisms, and that's what you're going to get. Uh, that's a great picture in my mind. But, uh, yeah, great job to me, Coach. Uh, I want to thank everybody, all of you for coming out last night to the game, and then also our administration, everybody that uh, goes into working that event. You know, that's one of those events where in the athletic department we call all hands on deck there. You know, the DH football game, those basketball games, and you know, Coach Shaker's track meets. Uh, you know, everybody gets involved. So thank you, uh, the entire staff at King Center for helping out there. That was that was a really well-run event there. So it was a lot of fun. Uh, the 4 uh, dive into last night's game. You know, we were on the road last weekend to one of our tougher trips of the year with Adams State and Alamosa uh, Friday night and then over to Grand at Port Louis. Friday night uh, played a really solid basketball game. Uh, again, kind of got on the gates a little bit slow, but then started to stretch a little bit in the, in the second quarter. We did the halftime with a 13-point lead. Uh, and then right away in the third quarter, we really popped and it stretched to 21 points. And, you know, help the lead around there for the majority of the game. Uh, credit to Adams State. They, they knocked home a couple threes and made it interesting uh, at, the, at the end of the third. Uh, but then, eight really good plays down the stretch. I really got to give our kids a lot of credit for executing. You know, uh, Adams runs a, a zone for 40 minutes and a number of different zones. And uh, our kids did a tremendous job of finding the seeds in that zone uh, and, and getting good baskets, really good shots all night long. I believe all three of our post players were double digit scoring that night. And then our guards hit some timely threes again, and you know, Chris Showalter did a great job of running the show uh, against Adam State. So a good victory there, and a really tough place to play. Uh, geez, it's, uh, I think it's 7,700 feet, something like that. So you know, a tough place to play. But uh, our kids really battled it out there and got a good victory on the road. Next day at uh, Fort Lewis, you know, it was kind of one of those funny little games where, you know, first half was a bit tough the entire way. We're down six at halftime and really knew we weren't playing very good basketball. Uh, but we're right there. Uh, third quarter, we cut to three a couple different times. Uh, and then just, you know, I don't want to, just kind of the wheels fell off a little bit where one thing, Fort Lewis got hot, they made some tiny shots, you know, a lot of them came off our defensive mistakes. But the game was a lot closer than what the score showed. And, Kind of one of those games where you go back and watch the film knowing that you didn't play real well, but you did some really good things at times too. Uh, but just one of those games where we have to get better at. For us to get to where we want to be as a team and a program, we really have to eliminate a lot of those mistakes that we had made for quite a while. It didn't score real well that game, it didn't make the shots that we have been uh, previously. But uh, you know, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't a, you know, a terrible performance by any means. We were just better than we were that night. Um, and you know what? That, that's a tough trip. We need to go walk away from that trip, coming home at 10.30 in the morning, and pretty proud of getting split. There's no doubt about it. But uh, kids been tough. Really had a good uh, effort that night in, in Durango. But then, uh, you know, quick turnaround. You know, we obviously took Sunday off, went to the ice arena on Monday, uh, did some shell drill stuff. Really, that was about it. Walked through what BH does, and then uh, yesterday morning, showed up at the King Center in sweats, you know, went real light, uh, just walked through their stuff again. And again, all credit to the kids, they, and they, they just executed tremendously on both ends of the floor. Uh, Got to give uh, Coach Richter a lot of credit for this. Uh, he had the BH scout, and he had them picked, absolutely picked. We had a great game playing together. On the other half of that, Probably one of our best executing games defensively. We really took Black Hills State out where they score best. Uh, and that was a big key to us. You know, they, they want the ball on the block a lot of times in the paint and just didn't let them in there. So great job by our kids executing. Uh, and then on the offensive end, you know, yeah, started a little shaky. I think we missed three laps in the first four to five minutes, had a couple wide open looks from the arc. Uh, obviously didn't make them. Uh, scoreless about the first four and a half. And the only defensive mistake that I remember from the night, and I haven't watched the game film yet, was BH's first basket of the game on the three. That was the only defensive mistake that I, I really remember uh, that you know they, they got us on. Uh, but after that, you know the, the lid opened up for us. Uh, 
made some really good post moves down the block. Uh, but the biggest thing, and I gotta give a ton of credit to Krista Showalter, she was just an absolute animal last night. You know, BH, their defensive pressure is tremendous. They really get after it defensively. And Krista handled their pressure wonderfully. Uh, and she just found shooters all night long. You know, what BH does is they pressure you, they scramble, they trap and stuff like that. And Krista just kept her head up, you know, then give in to their pressure and found Cooper, found Sammy, uh, Taylor, a number of threes. And Krista hit one for your own. And, you know, that big shots obviously helps, but we really execute on the offensive end. It wasn't a beautifully played offensive game for us by any means, but we made some really tremendous plays, and all the credit goes to Krista Showalter there. She finished with 10 assists, and that, that's a big-time game for our point guard right there. We had another couple other standouts. Uh, Anna Haugen, uh, 14 rebounds, which I knew she had a lot. When I saw the final stat sheet, I was actually pretty surprised that she had 14. Tremendous job in the glass. Again, the age is a really good, really prolific offensive rebounding team. We did a really good job there, but Anna especially. Uh, and then you know, Sandy Stefan, a uh, really good performance for her offensively. 5 of 7 from the yard, finished with 17 points, and probably left a couple out there. Yeah. <laughs> Had a couple around the rim that she could have put home too. But uh, really, just I couldn't be more happy with the way we played last night. I will. I'll, I'll, Confidently say that was our best defensive performance of the year. You know, from just executing a defensive game plan and then finishing plays, just a tremendous effort. Uh, very excited about that win, as we should be. Get back on the bus tomorrow at the Westminster in Salt Lake City. Um, go real light today at practice, obviously. Start to walk through their stuff tomorrow. The Westminsters, you know, they, they scared me. They, they got out was pretty good last year at in Salt Lake City. And then it was a little closer being here. Uh, but a uh, really good motion team. You know, when they're hot from the yard, they're tough to beat. So we, we got to play well again. But we have to play well again. And you know, hopefully uh, this stretch where we, again, one, two out of three gives us a lot of confidence. But uh, if we had the defensive performance that we did last night, obviously I, I really like our chances. So excited with the direction that we're heading. Uh, a number of kids are just stepping up in, in tremendous ways. I was talking to Mr. Rubish and Mr. Mann here. Uh, you know, we've Kate Humper is out for the semester. Uh, obviously, Marissa Perkins is, is done for the year. Uh, if you don't know, we finally we have the final uh, diagnosis on, on this. Uh, at first, we thought it was a, a broken tibia and probably some partial ligament damage. Then it turned into probably a possible partial torn ACL. Uh, and then just Monday, we finally figured out that it is a complete torn ACL. So she'll be having surgery here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, she's in good spirits, much better spirits than I am. I just feel awful for the young lady because, you know, prior to before she went down, you know, it, it was, this was probably playing the best out of any of our players. You know, she was knocking down jumpers from the yard. She was making tremendous post moves and just going after rebounds with reckless abandon. She was playing phenomenal basketball. I just feel awful for the young lady, but her spirits are high. She's ready to get surgery and start to tackle rehab. But uh, you know, I tell you what, that's that's why you have a bench. And Anna Hogan is on the cave, is building just tremendously. Uh, you know, Sam Stefik and Cooper Court and Heather Rogers have really carried the weight on the perimeter. Um, you know, I was explaining to these guys earlier, you know, you look at the length of the high school season compared to the college basketball season, you know, by the time we start and where we're at right now, uh, that's, you know, we're close to a full length high school season, and that's just kind of where you start to see that freshman wall a little bit. Well, I'll tell you what, those four kids, they're getting better right now, all right? That, that's been a real key to our success is all four of those four, they're just getting better and better and better and bringing a ton of confidence. So that, that's a, obviously a big bright for Right spot of course and just very excited about the score and the way they're playing. Obviously they, they got a lot of things to work on as we all do, but uh, they really helped us and especially with those two uh Peyton and Missy going down, they filled their roles just tremendously. Uh, you know, speaking of Molly McCabe, her streak continues of four uncontested layups and <laughs> just out strengthening the defense. That's just fun to see her do that every time. Uh, just a tremendous weapon there with her speed and athleticism. But uh, yeah, excited about the win last night, obviously. Uh, once we hit the floor today, where our focus is totally at Westminster and just continue to get better. 
Um, any questions for me before I bring Karina up here? Yes? What did you tell the girl for trying to shut down Cheyenne and that big hook down the Oh, yeah. Well, we didn't let her catch where she wanted to. That was the biggest thing. Uh, and that, again, we give Coach Richter a lot of credit there. You know, we have a little scheme to where she likes to catch the ball, and we negotiated some screens where she didn't, she didn't catch where she wanted to. Uh, they started to go to a little bit more in the second half. They kind of changed their offense a little bit to kind of, kind of a true four out one end, but then we adjusted to that as well. But, uh, yeah, we just didn't let her catch where she wanted to, and that, that was a big key to it, no doubt about it. Good question. I don't know. I don't look. I, I honestly don't look. I, I kind of have an idea in my head where we're at. I know that win helps us tremendously. Um, you know, there's too many games left for me to really, really look and start counting. Uh, but I know we're in the hunt right now. I know we're right on the verge of being in the playoffs. But you know, you, you just got to take your own business. You know, probably a couple weeks. Uh, maybe look. <laughs> just uh, maybe get some travel plans organized if we need to. Don't we know where we're in? But uh, I, I know we're right on the cusp of being in the playoffs right now. I believe we made 11. 11 to 26. And I know that's 40 percent. Yeah. 33 points from the arc. You know, I, there again, you know, it was, I, I may have mentioned earlier that you know, if it wasn't a beautifully played offensive game for us, uh, you know, secretly I knew we were going to run our secondary offense during the night because uh, I knew we would be able to handle their pressure pressure a lot better than that. And uh, they continued to trap and just scramble and pressure us. And all the credit goes to Chris and Showalter. And, you know, our, the rest of our guards are finding open spots. You know, of those 11 threes, two of them were really tough shots. Sammy hit a tough one, Cooper hit a tough one. But after that, you know, we were wide open. And again, Christy, they just found them and we knocked them down. But, uh, you know, they, they obviously really took away Megan on the inside. And that, that opened up a bunch of shots for us, too. Yep. Oh, sorry. Anything else? Alright, I got Karina Russell here today. Um, I, I, great story about Karina. I just I think the world of this young lady. Uh, she was uh, part of our program when I first got here. She wasn't able to dish it out for us. Uh, and then the last spring, she, uh, she walked in my office and coached, uh, I want to play again. I want to be on the team. And at the time, our roster was full. And I said, I just, I don't have, I don't like having more than 50 kids on the roster because you got too many kids standing around and I want the kids getting reps and getting a lot of work done. Uh, and then this fall we had an opening and I went right to her that day and I said, Karina, we got a spot. Do you want to play? Absolutely, I'm in. And I, what my point of this is, you know, every once in a while we as adults probably get down on the youth every once in a while for lack of commitment to stuff like that, you know, millennials, all that stuff. I figured out what millennials is, and it's true. Uh, but, uh, you know, Karina's character, uh, to be able to want to come back and finish out what she started, it just speaks values of what the type of person she is. And beyond that, she comes to practice every day and busts her tail and gets us better. Uh, hasn't seen a floor a whole lot this year. When she's out there, does great things. When Missy went down here, down to three post players, uh, I went to Karina and I said, Hey, Karina, you think you can play the, the post, the four for us? Did he play? And said, Yeah. And jumped in and practiced and ran the four. Uh, and she's still learning her sets and stuff like that. But in her half court offense, is just doing a tremendous job. And I just couldn't say enough good things about the young lady. I was just a, just a stand up person. Uh, great teammate and has made us better all year long and I just can't say enough good things about her. She's set to graduate with mechanical engineering major. Uh, you know, I, sorry, Green, I hope you don't mind sharing this, but uh, she, her dream was to be in the military of some kind. Uh, unfortunately, she can't join the military because of her asthma. 
that uh, first thing I've told her about that, well, the United States military is losing a tremendous person by that. She would have made our nation a lot better. But uh, she'll go on to do bigger and better things and work for the military, I know that. But I, I just, I can't uh, say enough good things about this young lady and what she's bringing to our program and just the type of person that she is. So I'll start stop babbling about her and gush over and let her talk. Come on up here, girls. Uh, of hosting it, 
and then uh, all our people involved uh, do an exceptional job from the Black Hills game at our place for football to obviously over at the Civic Center. It's, it's a fun atmosphere, uh, but it could be done with all the sports staff uh, within the athletic program. Plus the other coaches, you know, you see a lot of those coaches stepping up uh, and doing some things too. And, and a lot of programs, a lot of schools uh, would do that. You know, they kind of look at you funny if you ask the football coaches to go do something and they're like, uh, this isn't a football game, why would you be doing that? Where ours, if they're in town, they're helping out and they way we go. So uh, I appreciate that I and mean, it's a great deal. Uh, as far as track, I can't wait to see the highlights. My relay teams are going to be down there. So I'm uh, excited about that. I love track and I can't wait to see some of the highlights as they are out of town quite a bit. So uh, as far as our games go, um, last weekend when we were at Apple State uh, and Fort Lewis, uh, we got off to a, start, a slow start against Apple State. Uh, didn't score uh, like we needed to, um, didn't handle their pressure, they got up into us a little bit, um, and you know, uh, we got to adjust to officiating and things, some games they like to play a lot, uh, some games it's a, it's a ball when you touch them. Um, obviously we didn't uh, um, handle that very well uh, until the second half, the second half game, uh, once we got in the locker room, we uh, just go, go, go to the basket basically, and, and they start falling on us and, and did some good things. Um, in the second half, and we had a great comeback. We were down 10, 12 points uh, in the first half. Had a great comeback, and then we just didn't finish. Uh, we missed a, a couple free throws, missed a wide open layup. Um, you know, didn't get a stop when we needed to. Uh, those kind of things, and then uh, you know, turned it over the last play of the game. So uh, it was frustrating. There's no doubt about it. It's a team that we needed to beat down there. Uh, but they're a very good team. You know, they're one of the teams that are battling with us right now uh, for a playoff spot. And uh, uh, you know, it was a tough loss for the standings go, uh, but we knew we didn't lose to, a, you know, they say a, a team that you should beat. Well, honestly, in the RMAC, I don't know if there's a team that you should beat. You know, every team is very competitive. Uh, you know, record-wise, sometimes that's the case, but uh, you know, you got to lace them up every every half. You know, not just you go there and play one half and on the road, uh, you're going to struggle and, uh, if you don't play well. So. Uh, got that one in the books, then we turned around, we knew we were going to have our hands full with the Port Lewis team. Uh, that I think, you know, we just had uh, 25 games in a row uh, that they won at home. Uh, we knew uh, it was going to be tough. Honestly, as well as we played defensively last night, we probably played just as good, I felt, as far as making the errors and making some mistakes and just overall team defense. Um, as well at Fort Lewis as we did last night, and uh, Fort Lewis is up 13 and a half. You know, so and we only totally scored 19 points. So it tells you the caliber of the team that they have uh, down there. They obviously won the conference last year. They're ranked in the country um, this year already. Um, you know, they got a great opportunity to win the conference again this year, and uh, they're just on the ground. It's so impossible. They haven't lost at home for four years. You know, so to play them down there uh, is is definitely a challenge for us. So. Uh, you know, it, it's a uh, uh, came in the second half. You know, we were excited to only be down 13. We thought we played pretty well at both ends of the floor. Did some good things on the offensive side, um, but then in the, the defense kind of fell apart. The second half, when we started giving up layups, uh, they didn't shoot as well in the second half. And then, you know, if you pick your poison, you got to make sure that you protect the basket. We didn't protect the basket in the second half. And, and there's no way we're going to keep scoring with a team like that. So, um, pretty disappointed to go 0-2 on the road. Uh, it happens, and we knew that was the case. Uh, bottom line is we had to find a way, no matter who we're playing this Tuesday, this weekend, uh, we had to find a way to get a win, uh, get back to the win column. And, and obviously, it's the age. A uh, big rivalry game for us, and uh, our guys came focused, came ready to go. You know, you get home at 11 o'clock in the morning on a Sunday, uh, take Sunday off. You don't know how they're going to handle Monday. Uh, we came in, we, we were ready to go, you know, there's no question, um, you know, we we're going to have the best effort on this, uh, Tuesday night, last night, uh, and we did, it started on the defense spin, um, we obviously uh, did a great job of uh, uh, defending their stuff and keeping them in front, uh, taking away some of their main guys, uh, those kind of things, and holding them to 19 points, uh, holding any team to 19 points is incredible. Uh, you know, but a team that is pretty explosive, they have had some trouble scoring uh, in halves and then uh, turn around and play really well in the second half. But we made sure and they did a good job in the second half that we held them down. Uh, so it was definitely a defensive effort. Uh, no question about it last night. 
um, but we did uh, uh, assist for some points too. You know, we knew they were going to take away uh, Matt Coolis. They got the team done basically the second to touch the ball. Uh, so other guys are going to have to step up, and, and other guys did. You know, all the way down from uh, as we call our little guy or our 12-year-old, as they say. Um, you know, Jay Keith, that's running around out there, and, and uh, he's just an incredible player. Knocked down some shots for us. Uh, you know, just a great attitude. He's guarding our best uh, offensive guy all night last night as well. So, uh, you know, him hitting the threes and doing things on the offense. Uh, I, I don't know where he's at. I need to check, but I think his assist to uh, turnover ratio has got to be one of the highest in the conference, if not the highest. Um, so he just does so many good things for us. Um, but other guys that stepped up, obviously, are seniors. We really challenged them after last weekend. And we're kind of leaning on this time of year. It's the second half of the conference season. We're leaning on our seniors. That's what it's all about right now. I, I can take a step back and just go, you know, we tell them it's their team uh, from the get go, uh, but it's really their team right now. You know, how we're going to finish the year is going to be based on how the seniors come around and, and make the plays. It is nice, however, to have a couple freshmen. We've got three freshmen right now that are not playing like freshmen. Uh, Ryan hit on it exactly. He that freshman funk uh, this time of year. Our guys have been better, and it, it's incredible. I, I've never coached a group of freshmen, much less one or two of these guys that, even from the big go, they didn't seem like freshmen. They just go out and play, they make the right decisions, they go compete every day in practice, every day in the games, and, and uh, I just see them getting better. And uh, that's been a big part of it, but that being said, it's still going to come down to the seniors making plays. And I'm going to allow those seniors to make plays too, because they're the ones that are going to be all looking for it. Uh, they did that once again last night, especially on the defensive side. So, um, so that's our uh, last three games. We do have a big one again on Friday night against Westminster. Um, you know, they're uh, a team that doesn't qualify for the playoffs, um, but you know, if they did, two could be in the top half. Uh, for sure, uh, if not even top four, they can be competing against. Right now, it's kind of messed up. I know Ryan doesn't look at it. I look at it after every game. I'm like, the heck with that. I want to see this is our main goal. I want to figure out uh, you know, where we're at, how we're going to reach our goal, and what needs to happen. The problem is, like he said, there's no way to figure that stuff out right now. You know, it'll drive you nuts if you try to figure out if it, this team loses to that team and, and all those kind of things. But the bottom line with Westminster is they don't count for the top uh, eight, but they count as losses for those teams. So after we beat them on Friday, hopefully, we're, you know, we're their biggest fans. You know, they, they got to beat everybody. You know, as far as I'm concerned, they want to feed the rest of the way. That's the best thing that could happen for us. So. Um, and with them, they also have a goofy schedule though, because now on a Friday night, they play single games back to back. So what that means is we go play them with our travel partner in Blackwell State. So we play them on Friday night, which is basically equal for all of us. We all play Friday night, prep all week, and all those kind of things. But they turn around on a Saturday and play a team that hasn't played on a Friday. So they're called the Lone Wolf, and that uh, we have having 15 teams. Um, so it's a pretty big disadvantage for them um, to have that. A pretty good advantage for like Blackwell State to play on a Saturday night now um, and not have to, you know, they're preparing the rest of the week now for a team that has to play on Friday and doesn't get that chance to prepare on a Saturday. So uh, for where they're at and having that thrown against them, that tells you how good they are, uh, and especially being at home. So uh, so it's a, it'll be a challenge for us this weekend. Uh, we are going to take Saturday and Sunday off. Uh, we need the break. The coaches need a break. Um, you know, it, it's, it's that time of year where if you're healthy, uh, if you got that energy, you got that uh, enthusiasm going, you got an opportunity to win, win down the stretch. So uh, we got to make sure that we're keeping our guys healthy and uh, uh, off their legs, so to speak. So, any quick questions for me? Come here. Just last night? <laughs> Ryan always looks good. And if we know his record. He's only he's never lost in 2017, is he? He's undefeated in 2017 still. So. That's all. That's all you got for me. One of the big things I did talk about real quick, and I'll get to Tim, but um, it is you know just like Ross here. It, you have those players on your team. We got four red shirts right now. And, and, I say it after about every game that I got in the paper uh, today, but uh, those kids that don't play a lot of minutes, um, whether they're, we got a couple seniors that don't play a lot, uh, mostly because of injuries and that kind of thing, but uh, even some couple juniors or sophomore and that kind of thing, and bottom line, it doesn't matter if you're a freshman all the way up to a senior, if you're not playing, 
it's hard. You know, when you see everybody else, especially when you're winning, um, but even when you're losing, it's just like, well, give me a turn. You know, I want to go play. We're losing. You know, I, I can't do any worse. You know, one of those kind of things. So, fortunately, we're winning. Uh, but bottom line is, I think both of our teams right now uh, are just getting better at practice. And a big part of ours is we have these four freshmen and four red shirts for us, and then we have two or three other guys that play on our red team. And uh, uh, they prepared us so well. You know, Coach Glenn had the scout for us. Uh, you know, BH has been doing the same thing for the last couple of years and that kind of stuff. Uh, but it was all new group for us. And the look that they gave us at practice, uh, just on that Monday, was seriously, I, I, I do, I truly believe the difference in the game, especially on the defensive side. For those guys to give that kind of look, to have smart kids in your program, that you show them it once or twice, and they go run it. We watch them film, they show it once and then on the court, and then they go run it, and they actually run it pretty darn good compared to what you're going to see on, on the next night. It's just been incredible for us as our scout team. And I can't say enough about them. And just a simple fact, it's one thing if you're redshirting and you're not playing, it's so-called a little bit easier. Uh, but, but kids like uh, um, the girls team and, and that have, and a couple of our kids, it, it's, just, it's just great to see uh, the youth. I don't think Marina is the youth of today. She's an uh, exception to the rule, I guess. But, uh, but it's great to see them come in and meet every day in practice. So I want to give a shout out uh, to those guys on both teams, but that was a big part of ours. So, yeah. If you're getting a question now, that I remember nothing. What was that? Well, you mentioned JP and the yeah, well that's the thing. I wanted to bring Jake here. I got a quick story about Jake. I told Ryan this on the way over. <laughs> you know, he's got such an accent. He's from Australia. If you didn't know that, I know. This group probably knows that. But, um, he's got such a deep accent or uh, whatever kind of accent, but a strong accent. Um, he tried telling me something in the huddle with about the eight minute mark. And I couldn't understand a word he was saying. You know, it's loud in there and that kind of thing. And then I didn't know what he was asking either. You know, if it was on the defensive side, the offensive side. Because it was just with our media timeouts, our Tom Man media timeouts, that we had. Uh, he's a sponsor of them all, I think. So, um, But we did so many of them. Sometimes you go to a huddle and you want to just tell them one or two things or nothing. You know, you don't call a timeout because they're making a run and you've got to make an adjustment. Sometimes it's just like, okay, keep doing what you're doing. Go play. You know, so. Uh, we got into that, and it was kind of one of those situations, and he's trying to tell me something, I didn't know what he was saying. Connor was sitting next to him, and I said, Connor, tell me what Jake's saying, you know, you got to get this fixed or whatever. And Connor goes, I don't know you're a coach. <laughs> so that was our time. But bottom line is I wanted him to come and talk today. He's actually in a scholarship meeting. He's a super, super smart kid. Um, he's applying for some big time scholarships on campus. So he's out of that with a couple of the other freshmen. So he went to came anyway, but I didn't want him coming to Buffalo Wild Wings. And us not be able to understand the word he's saying and hear because he's got some great things to say. So hopefully he's able to attend the next time that we have a luncheon uh, next Tuesday if we have a next Tuesday. Anyway, so back to JP. Um, defensive side, typically, and whether you call it a U.S. kid or just kids in general, if they shoot and they play like him, when we recruited him and we went through our things with all the guys, uh, you know, he shot over 50 some percent from the international three point line. Teams in Australia know who he was. You know, they weren't saying enough and, and letting him shoot kind of thing. They were playing him basically how he's seeing it all the time, where he's got a guy uh, you know, in his shorts the, the whole game, and he still could knock down those shots. So he knew he was going to be a big time shooter. You never knew as far as the strength and that kind of thing when you're 150 pounds dripping wet. Uh, you never know. Uh, but he's been able to handle that because of you know, what he's seen, plus he puts ball on the ground. That's offensive side. I never in a million years thought that he could do what he does on the defensive side. It's just been absolutely incredible. Keeping guys in front, fighting through screens, playing 30, 35 minutes. He's played the most minutes on any player on our team and on the top of the conference as far as minutes played. So uh, he's out there uh, competing at both ends of the floor. And that probably has been one of the biggest things is just the way he competes on the defensive side. Like I said, he's on the, their best scoring uh, guard last night again and chasing them off screens, doing this, doing that, and then he still has the legs at the end of the game to knock down a big shot uh, when he needs to. And, and it's just been, it's been great to see him that way. Uh, he competes every day in practice, and uh, uh, we got to make sure we're not wearing him out. Um, I did have one other quick uh, story with him. Is I, I had meetings last week with him and stuff, and I said, are we playing too many minutes with you? 
was like, heck no, you know, I'll go play all the time. Every 18, 19 year old's gonna probably tell you that. Um, but, you know, we kind of watch our minutes with back to back games and, and all those kind of things. And he goes, well, sometimes, you know, we, we get out on the offensive side and it doesn't feel like I'm doing anything and I'm kind of out of the rhythm and that kind of stuff. I said, well, that's on purpose. That's where you have to rest once in a while. Him sitting out on the wing, just standing there, and there's a guy one foot from him, is great offense for us. You know, so he doesn't understand that if he's sitting on the bench, then you know, guys are helping in the gaps, and we're not able to drive as much, we're not able to do some things. So him just standing on the wing, you know, eating a hot dog is a good thing for us. You know, and other guys can do other things, and, and uh, uh, he, he needs to understand that sometimes he needs to get his best on the offensive side and start kind of doing that stuff all the time. All right. Any other quick questions? Did you ever figure out what he was trying to say? I have no idea. I know. It must have worked. So. <laughs> I don't I, I know I have to ask him what it really is. We'll talk about him, like I said, the other freshmen, some of the scholarship stuff, too. Had an incredible semester with the GPAs that came out. Uh, we're very excited where we're at in the classrooms. Anything else? All right, thanks so much for coming out again. Uh, here's Nate. We'll see you next. Uh, Tuesday, and then again, Friday, Saturday, we're at home for back-to-back -back weekends, uh, four games in a row at home. Coach, a couple things for you as we leave. Coach Larson doesn't look the record, but I'll give everybody the update, okay? If the tournament started tomorrow, both of our teams would be in. The problem is the tournament doesn't start tomorrow, okay? So, there's, there's that, too. Uh, also, next Tuesday, we're back at campus. We'll uh, have some pizza, Lynch Brothers Pizza, and we'll be back there. And look forward to watching these guys. Go rockers.com. You can watch the stretch internet Friday night against Westminster. Please leave a tip. Thanks for coming. Have a great week.